All right, we are live today with Miss Wendy Anderson, just a single mom rocking everything that she touches, literally turns to gold. Don't look at me like that, Wendy, because I know. Don't look at me like that. You know you're amazing. You know you're awesome. You know you're rocking the the single motherhood. Like, you know, a lot of whole married women ain't doing it. And one of the reasons why I started um, the Divorce the Dollars podcast is because I wanted women to see that they can not only survive, but thrive if they have to leave a toxic situation. Okay. We are waking up the ties have changed and we're just not interested in suffering the way some of our close relatives and ancestors and all that good stuff have at the hands of men. Like it's just not necessary. So Wendy, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you've created, curated, I can't even say, like literally curated, manifested (laughs) the life that you want to live as a single mom. So I... Unfortunately, early on, I knew I was going to be a single mom. And it was kind of one of those things where I had my first child at 31. And then I turned around and had my second child at 33. So I was pregnant back to back. And I knew I wasn't I didn't want to give them a subpar life. I didn't want to be that statistic to where I would struggle and they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have a full life as if they would have if it, they came from a two income household. Right. And um. So when I left my, I got laid off from my corporate job. And during that time, I decided to build my business. I had already um, launched or created my LLC in 2013. And so during that phase of unemployment, what really triggered me was I got pregnant. And I remember being on unemployment. I remember going down to the food stamp um, office and for whatever reason, they denied me food stamps. And I was on, um, I was unemployed. And so it was in that moment where I was like, I will never be in a situation to where you can't tell me I can provide for my child or my unborn, unborn children. So I just kind of went into overdrive and it was a struggle to get the business up and running in the beginning. And then the dad made the worst comment he could ever make to me. He was like, you know, you may need to go get, um, a job because that little business isn't producing um, what it needs to be producing. And mind you, we didn't (laughs) stay yet. So I didn't understand where he was coming from. And I was like, well, I'm single. I have no biological family here. Any kind of help that I do get, I'm going to have to make the investment to get help. And I couldn't afford to have a traditional life. And Mm -hmm. so I made my business work and I had a background in sales. I came from pharmaceutical sales. I came from for-profit school sales. I'm used to doing um, a half a million dollars every quarter in sales with me and my team. So I was like, oh, I can do this. Okay. And so it took me probably about 18 months to start producing consistent revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's just where I've been. But I pegged myself as a business system strategist. I teach service-based entrepreneurs how to streamline and automate their business systems so they can escape burnout, work with the right clients, increase their profits and save time. Right. And that time is so important. It's, you know, I do systems and mm-hmm. marketing systems. And one of the things that I work with clients on, mostly women, because I, you know, this space is much needed, I feel like, mm-hmm. um, mostly women. Like we don't have the same time that our male counterparts have. Like we don't, we've got to make it so that revenue is consistently coming in when the kids are sick and you have to take, take off of work and when, you know, they got a game or they, you know, they got to do homework. They got to, we got to cook them. What do they need to eat? We got to drop them off. We got to take them to a doctor's appointment. All of that takes away time from us. The, all of that free labor takes away time where we could be, you know, charging, you know? So mm-hmm. it's really important for us, even if when we start the business, you know, some of my um, followers and subscribers, they haven't started the business yet, but when they start the business, it's important to understand that you're not going to be able to do all that stuff on your own at all. 
period. And I, I talk about batching a lot. I talk about outsourcing. You know, you were on me for the longest. Um, it's been a year now. I have a cleaning service that comes out twice a month on a Monday. You know, it takes me six hours to clean this entire house. That's time that I get back to work on things that's going to generate revenue for this business so I can be a provider for these. I have two little boys um, mm -hmm. right now. And so that's important. And so a lot of women always ask me, they're like, how are you getting so much done as a single mom? And then I'm also a solopreneur. I have no team. There's no assistant. There's no anything. And so everything I do, if it's not on my calendar, I don't make time for it. And it's, it's all about being intentional and blocking off my schedule. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What are some of the systems that you feel like you've set up in your house because we talk about, you know, business systems a lot. And even when we talk to some of the most successful entrepreneurs, like I'm still like for you, for instance, I'm like, girl, hire a cleaner. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so what are some of the systems that you set up inside the home that you feel like help you, you know, protect your time? One of the things is I involve my children and everything. I have a conversation about that. Our way of life is a whole lot different than most and that I need them to help. I need them to help me so that I can give them the life that they deserve. So one simple stuff. We don't take shoes out of the car. I don't have time to look through the house to try to figure out where their shoes are. Their shoes stay in the car. That's a time saving tip for me. Um, Anytime they move anything in this house, they put it right back. You know, they have um, simple systems, but for more as psychological, it's, hey, children, I'm getting ready to change the schedule. Um, here are the benefits to why the schedule is going to be changed. Here are the expectations of why I'm changing the schedule. Do you have any questions or concerns about these changes that are made? How do you feel? I do that on day one. Day two, I repeat the same thing in the same chronological order. Day three, I start to repeat myself for a third time and it's, oh, mom, I got it. So mm -hmm. for me, it's our, my system more so is communication, molding them into a way to where I can get things done quickly and efficiently. And there's checkpoints or, or there's expectations or standards in place to where they know what's being asked of them and they understand. I tell people all the time, you know, I work with adult learners. If right. people don't understand why we're asking them to do something, they don't give a damn. And so with children, if they don't understand the benefit to something, I'm not, I'm a gentle parenter. So, you know, if they, if they understand the benefit, I don't have no problems. Right. You know? So that's, that's one of my systems. Other than that, you know, I do like any other parent, I meal prep, but to me, that's just standard. That's just something that you do, but the psychological conversations that I have for my kids, that's what really helps me. Right. I like that. <laughs> Actually like involving the kids in the decision-making process. We do something similar here. Mm -hmm. um, I just... I'm just really real with them. Look, we we're doing this or we're doing that. Or, you know, our goal this year is to like, for the instance, the girls are in like, you know, Tyler Perry shows and stuff like that. But our goal for this year is to get you into X amount of shows or do X amount of work this year. So these are the steps that we're going to have to take to get you there. You know, when, when you break it down, I feel like they get it. They mm -hmm. go along, they got that buy-in and it's just not you micromanaging everything. Like they, they feel like right. they're attached to the actual right. goal or, of. And, and I talk to them so much, they know that our lifestyle is different. So like, they'll come downstairs and they'll say, you know, Hey mom, um, will you get on the computer? And I'm like, well, what do you want? Cause I told them that our lifestyle isn't free, that I have to exchange my time for dollars. And even though I made the executive decision to, to not work outside of the house, I still work. And I typically work more than most moms. Mm -hmm. And so I tell them in order for us to travel the world and do the things that we do, the money has to come from somewhere. And so they'll come down here and they'll say, Hey mom, can you get on the computer? And I'll say, well, what do you want? What are you looking for? And they'll say, well, I want you to buy me this such and such, such thing. And you need money for that. And so that excites me because I've started teaching them financial literacy at a very young age and right now they're seven and nine so right. um as a single mom for me I don't want a, my young men to get to 18 and then the world is expecting them to perform and then I didn't prepare them so we started early 
Right. I like that. Starting early. Cause I always find it weird. Like, why do we not prepare our kids? Like, why do we don't talk? I, the, I got prepared with a lot of things, but the, it's like the things that you didn't get prepared for. It's like you hit a certain age and then they're like, well, where's your this? Or why haven't you? And like, who prepared me for certain right. things? I think for me as a single parent, like that is the thing that I fear the most because at the end of the day, it's one, it's one of us, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they are going to have some gaps. Um, Can you, do you, have you seen any like gaps that you could already tell? Like, okay, I'm going to have to maybe outsource this or, cause I mean, I'm, I I homeschool my kids, but I'm not a teacher. Yeah. So that I. So you do know for at the start of the pandemic, I also took my children out of public school and then I homeschooled them traditionally. That's Mm -hmm. not my ministry. Um, I put them in out school. They had a private tutor for a year, but um, I thrive best. I always make a joke about I'm a part time mom. I'm I'm nights and weekends. (laughs) I I need that time to where I can decompress. They need to have their own identity outside of me. So I did homeschooling for about a year and a half, two years. And then um, I think 2021, I put them back into public school. But now they still have a private tutor. Mm-hmm. Um, of course they do karate, they're in swim class, they're in soccer, you know, they're in all of those things, but, um, I supplement with a tutor. I don't blame you. Mm-hmm. I, I enrolled my kids in math tutor, like, and I love math. I'm a math whiz. A lot of people don't know that about me, but I hired a math tutor and I just, their scores just, just went up. So I really believe in hiring the experts in yeah. certain things, you know, cause as a, I'm just not a teacher, but at yeah. the same time, I wanted to curate my child's, you know, their experience, their, their education experience. So, I so our, so how I do that, we made a pact. I told them that if they were open to going back into public school, that every single time they were out of school, think winter break, summer break, um, spring break, you know, we're traveling. So like this year, Uh, for the winter break we went to California that it was their first trip to California and they want to go to Universal Studios and I've always dreamed about going out to Laguna Beach Mm -hmm. and so that California was a week there and I got to meet clients when I was out there and that's that's another cool thing like they get to travel and meet my clients and then my clients take them on as their own children and that was good and then for summer break I took them to New York, we went to Madrid, we went to Rome, we went to the Amalfa Coast. And so they get world travel and they're getting to see, you know, life beyond just the TV screen. So being a single mom and having a plan and an entrepreneur on top of it, it gives me a whole lot more flexibility than if I had a nine to five or if I had to depend on someone else to provide for us financially. Let's talk about some of the places that your kids have been, because we are kind of similar in that where we're like, you know what? I want to go so and so pick up the kids. Let's go. (laughs) Where are some of the places that your children have been? So I just named a few so far, of course, Florida, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, Rome, Amalfa Coast, Madrid, Spain, um, Broken Bow, Oklahoma, of course, Arkansas, which is where I'm from, Texas. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for now. Do you have any tips for traveling moms? Because I mean, those are big trips. I've I've taken my girls when they were six to Thailand Mm -hmm. and I did all over again. Like there's some things I probably would have been differently, but I felt like I was as prepared as I could be. What are some things that you did to prepare for taking two little kids all the way overseas like that? Um, well, one, I took the nanny with us. So I've had a nanny ever since um, the youngest was born. Um, I did have them literally back to back. I was pregnant for two years straight. And so my friends made a joke with me and they were like, we're, we, we gave you a, 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 a baby shower last year. You messed around and got pregnant again. You're not getting another baby shower, but we got something better. So they hired a nanny for me. And at that time, I thought nanny meant you had to pay a salary. But thankfully, I learned that I can have a nanny 
nanny and I can have her like on an hourly rate or like I would just keep a certain amount. I call it her little bucket. I, I would send her so much money at a time so I wouldn't have to worry about how much things cost. And so I took the nanny. But back to the same principle, if I know we're traveling and our schedule is changing, it goes back to the same conversation earlier. Hey guys, you know, I want to go over to Italy. Here's, we would lay in bed at night and look at pictures of the Amalfi Coast and I would show them how cool it was and all the food that we would eat. And I realized that there's nothing really cool for kids to do in Europe. I probably shouldn't say that. (laughs) Nothing. And so what I, what I, what I did was, um, I, I mean, I told them the travel plans. I set the expectations. I asked about their questions. I laid in bed and we looked at all of the cool places we can see in person. But then I was like, this trip is really for me. And it felt really selfish. So I decided that once we flew out of New York, New York has a lot of amazing things for kids to do or family things. So I purposely planned cool things to do at certain museums in New York. And we took the uh, subway for the first time and that was an adventure in itself. And then once we got to Italy, I bribed them. I was like, hey, when we get back to New York, we got other cool things to do (laughs) in the city. And so they were pretty content. You know, they were just happy eating their gelato. And they were, the scene ended up being pretty cool for them, but just making it fun. But what I told them was, this trip, I vow to not be on my laptop. I vow to be your mom. I vow to be present in the moment when we go to the beach and our boat rides. It's going to be our time. You get to have me back from social media and I get to just kind of sit and see what's been going on with you. And so that is what um, my accountability stick were. And they're like, mom, mom, you're on that phone again. <laughs> I'm really sorry. So that's, that's how I get my kids buy in. Like, I'm not going to be multitasking. Nothing's going to have my attention. You are in my full attention on this trip. Right. Well, if you're watching this, don't forget to like and subscribe, but leave in the comments some travel tips that you have if you're traveling with kids. I know, you know, for me, I just try to make sure to be just really organized with the with the time, because one thing about flying out of Atlanta and flying out of these big airports with kids, like if if you get overwhelmed, like I kind of can when things are just all out of my control. I'm I, I, running late to the airport and, you know, waiting only an hour. That, that's not an option when you're, oh, when yeah. you're a small kid. I forgot about that. So I always go to Peachy Parking Shuttle. I always get the shuttle. I never park at the airport because that's doom and gloom. Right. Um, <laughs> I had a whole Google sheet. So on this Google sheet, I had texted to the nanny. I had emailed it to ourselves. We had a whole itinerary from our flight, flight times, airlines, Um Anytime I leave the country, I won't use the taxis right at the airport. I always um, prepay and order a private car from airport to um, the first hotel. I had already scheduled our bullet train rides, our transfers to any and everything, ferry rides. Um, I had an Airbnb host when we got down to the Amalfa Coast. So I always like to purchase those excursions locally. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily do that online because you can get a better deal. Right. Um, but she knew I was traveling with children. She knew their ages. She knew to find me the tours that were more family oriented versus just group oriented because it's a different, it can be a group of adults. That's a different dynamic if it's family oriented. And so you have to ask. And, um, but yeah, that whole itinerary helped me and I stuck to it like glue. And the <sighs> next, she's traveled, but she hasn't traveled as extensively. And she kept seeing why are there so many gaps in between, you know, when we get to the airport or here or there. And I was like, the airline can change the time of departure multiple times. I was like, with how the industry is going right now, you know, you may or may not be reimbursed by the airline. So I was right. like, I need wiggle room so that I don't have to come out of pocket. And so right. thankfully that, that those travels this summer mm-hmm. went off with a hitch. Good, good. Well, let's switch gears just a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit more personal. Okay. What do you think took you so long to hire a cleaning service? 
for um one I felt like I was already overextended financially and that was one more bill that I couldn't add to it just to be honest Mm -hmm. um I had to really sit and calculate and one day I just said forget it let me just have them come in and do the estimate and do the deep cleaning to kind of see what that's like and the first time it's a lot more expensive but it's worth it Mm -hmm. and when I saw how much they were able to do in a short period of time I was sold and I realized I didn't know how I was I don't even know how I made it those early years with infants and cleaning and doing all the things crazy, but public shame. I think a lot in the black community specifically, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a constant shaming of asking for help or getting help, or, um, you're looked at as lazy, or you don't have it together if you are needing all these different services. And I find that to be very ignorant. Um, I, Other cultures have had help, you know, even if we go back to the motherland, you know, there's help all through Africa. It's just something about being in the West over here in the United States, people glorify overextending yourselves. And anytime you get help, then it's uh, instant jealousy from people that maybe don't have the the financial means or the mental bandwidth to wrap their head around it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's they turn very religious and biblical about it. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> about, you know, in the Bible says this or that. It's just cra- like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but so it, it was just one, a budgetary issue. And then two, it was programming because I didn't want that backlash of um, who does she think she is. And at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter. Like, I'm not going to keep subscribing myself to something that is sucking the life out of me. Right. You know, if and it's important for me to keep my house clean because I'm very OCD. Not only do I live here, I work here. So right. it hurts my productivity. It messes okay. with my psychological, my mindset. If I come in here and it's cluttered or it's nasty or it's, everything is not organized. And so right. now I know at one o'clock, two o'clock, every Monday, every other week, the cleaning crew is coming. They're going to reset everything. I get to decompress. And, you know, while they're cleaning, that's the time for me to go walking, working out, or I can just go to some part in the house and get to work. And, you know, it's, it's a great experience, but cultural shaming is why it took me so long, mostly. Yeah, I I agree with you. Actually, on that trip, when I was in Thailand with two six-year-olds, Um, this lady was asking me, you know, how she, she had followed me. She wanted to know how I was able to make, you know, five figures a month from homes, multiple Mm -hmm. six figures from home in my own businesses and stuff. And that's one of the things that I told her, I said, Hey, you know, I I hire a cleaning service. They used to only come every other week back in that time Mm -hmm. when COVID happened and we were all living in the house all the time. It was like every week. And Mm -hmm. immediately she said, that's lazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I laughed at her because, you know, I was on the trip with two little girls. She was on a trip with her and her husband and they were having issues with Mm -hmm. one could go on the excursion and the other one couldn't go on the excursion because they couldn't afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was telling her, I said, no, that's not lazy. It's because being responsible with your money, because if you let's say you're making ten thousand dollars a week and a lot of us online are making you know, good money. We're making $10,000 a month, $5,000. You know, we're making some decent money. We have to, we're the providers for our entire family. So if you break that down, you're saying I work 20 or 40 hours a week, you could be looking at your hourly time is worth anywhere from what, 250 to $500 an hour. Mm -hmm. And it, and it will take you just like Wendy said, to takes her six hours, Mm -hmm. six hours from top to bottom to do everything by yourself versus it's going to cost me $200 or $250, $300 for somebody to come in there with a crew of people and get it done in two hours. Like at that point, you're, you're costing yourself money. Your time is money. And I think as, you know, like you said, as a community or just, you know, peer to peer, different gender roles and stuff like that, we don't have a habit of um, valuing women's time Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. period. And I think that's one of the biggest mindset shifts 
that we have to make, especially when you're talking about going into business from home or even working from home. If you work a job from home, like I know so many of my subscribers, I did a video on TikTok a while ago talking about, you know, working from home. Then Mm -hmm. you got, you know, a lot of these women are working from home. They got the kids there with them. They have no daycare, no help. They're cooking, they're cleaning, and they're still putting in, you know, a good solid 40, 50 hours a week because they're expected to also contribute to their household. Like Mm -hmm. it's a job. They're they're at work and Mm -hmm. they're still expected to do all that. No, that's Mm -hmm. insane. Right. Completely insane. But I think the 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 problem is the patriarchy. I always mispronounce that word. (laughs) They they've drilled that that the man goes get works, brings home the check, sits down, sits in front of the TV, gets a beer, does nothing else, which I find to be insane. Um, depending upon your family dynamic and how you were raised and how you were conditioned, that just kind of gets passed on. Where I'm from, my mother and father were equal partners. They they both contributed to the household uh, financially and physically. And unfortunately, a lot of families are one-sided. You know, the woman is doing all the work and the man becomes um I, not too the man becomes a child so not too recently I had a male friend over who was visiting for the week and you know simple things just wouldn't put stuff back up in the refrigerator and I'm like bro you know you got the juice out you know put it back in there and I think for a lot of us you know I'm probably going on a tangent with this oh. you, know, you know we want equal partners not someone that I have to mother or I have to baby. And until they show some type of consistent competence, you know. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you because it's, it's. and I did a uh, video where I talked about like cosplaying. Like, even though that is not the majority of our dynamics, mm-hmm. okay? A lot of us contribute significantly financially to our household and the running of the household. Like without our financial contribution, a lot of our households would completely collapse, <laughs> but mm-hmm. we're still expected to cosplay as if, you know, our mm-hmm. contribution doesn't exist there. And that was, that became a struggle for me in relationships. It's one of the reasons why I'm like, you know, I had to step back from the situation that I was in because I can, it's the mental low, like of pretending mm-hmm. every day <laughs> that you're not contributing in that way. It's just insane. It's it, you, you go out into the world and you have to put on this armor to kill your food. You know what I'm saying? You got to earn money. You got to deal with the corporate stuff. You got to deal with clients. You got to do all this stuff. And then when you open up your door to your own home, you got to put on a mask. Yeah. Another mask, another armor to pretend like you're a second class citizen in your own house. I don't, I don't, I'm happily single right now because when I desire to have open lines of communication with the male counterparts, um, the ambition is not there um, for whatever reason. Uh, if I want to talk about finances and how we're going to manage things, they don't want to have that conversation. It's, oh, you worry and stress. We'll figure it out when we cross that. No, sir, we need a contingency plan. We need to make sure there's something in place to where we have a peace of mind. If something hits the fan and it's out of alignment for us, you know, how are we going to manage that? You know, because life happens, um, you know, I'm at peace. My home is clean. My children are well-mannered and, and we have an organized life. You know, if I'm going to date or enter, entertain a man, then we got to be on the same page and I can't be responsible for you. And I'm not saying he needs to be responsible for me either, but it needs to be equally yoked. Right. And the, the responsibility can't be 85% on me. And then I'm left wondering, are you even going to do your, your part? Mm-hmm. Now, I think as a collective, as women, because one of the things that TikTok has shown me is that unfortunately, we're all living the same story. So it, it can't just be one or two of us. I mean, I've seen hundreds of women speak yep. the same thing. So it's like, for me, it's, I'm going to take myself out the equation 
Now I'm raising two black boys. So I have to be mindful of what I say to them about male counterparts, because I do want them to grow up to have a healthy view of self and their role in society. My goal is to um, condition them or raise them to be notable contributors to society. But as a woman, I can only do so much. And so you had asked me earlier, you were asking me what gaps am I missing that male role model that I can depend on. They have uncles and cousins, but they live far. And where we live at, there's no family here. So I think that's the true gap that I'm missing, like getting them around other male figures that are progressive, you know, as professionals, as fathers, as just contributors to the neighborhood and to the community. And I I have a lot of people here that I know, but it's it's a whole different dynamic if they don't have access to that inside of their home. And I'm very aware of that. You know, I'm also tired of that narrative too, when it's, well, you can't raise them I'm aware of what I can do as a woman. I'm not trying to replace um, a man, but I also think it needs to be stated that everyone is pushing two-parent households. Well, I'm not going to push a two-parent household if it's toxic or if my child is consistently seeing that I'm being degraded, whether sometimes being degraded doesn't mean that you're being beat on or you're being cussed out. Being degraded is they're watching me work myself to the bone with little to no help. And then I am in a fragile state or an agitated state because I'm mad because I'm exhausted. And Mm -hmm. so for me, when I realized I was constantly agitated, didn't really have time for self-care, didn't really have time to sit and pause to acknowledge my children's mood swings because their needs wasn't getting met. Mm -hmm. That is when my life started to thrive. I was like, oh no, this is making me, this situation is making me bitter. Not being a single mother has never made me bitter right (laughs) to where I felt taken advantage of or I felt um the person was ungrateful to my contribution and if you see me busting my tail to keep the house together to keep the children at bay to make sure that I don't go under like at what point are you going to come in and save me right or or contribute you know like the whole thing like people are like oh she left me because I left the orange juice out on the counter no it's just when they do things like that it's just implicitly you know it's an implication that you see that as my task like it's my task to you know come behind you like you're making work for me that that's one of the things that one of the systems in my household that we do do not make work for anybody else Mm -hmm. if you eat something then you clean it up you put it back you you don't leave dishes in the in the dish in in the sink we use a dishwasher here put it in the dishwasher like don't create extra work for people just because you feel like you can and a lot of relationships that I've been in in the past that Mm -hmm. seems to be like it's almost like they don't feel masculine or they're not a leader or it's 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 something and I'm I'm, one day I'm gonna like fully put my finger on it but they don't feel like their manhood is secure unless they are creating work for you it's it's a weird but it's I don't even think it's the work too I think there's something deeper at play too it just came to me as well I think we're putting a lot of emphasis on the work, but I want to shift the gears just a bit. The other problem that I have with with the, what's going on in this whole dynamic is we're a lot more ambitious and focused and goal oriented. And it's also a conflict of interest because it's the envy of our work ethic. Yeah. I And, and I talked about that a little bit on one of the videos that I did where I talked about how the patriarchal system like the christianity system of god head of household woman kids like it puts so much focus on i gotta be in charge of this one realm like i've got to control everybody that's that underneath me that they're not noticing the power that the president has or the 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 corrupt you know, share it for the judge or that they're not competing with each other. They're competing with us. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and it's and I've calculated a long time ago that you know this capitalist system. It is it, it, you're literally born to work yourself to damn death. Let's mm-hmm. let's just be honest. That's that's what it is. You're born to work yourself to death, and that's the, in in their eyes that is why you're here. And in order to overcome that, like the way prices are raising, the way things are, you know, crumbling apart, where these systems are falling down, it's going to take two people, two strong leaders in in a household. But Mm -hmm. they understand that if they are constantly focusing on controlling women, the women that are Mm -hmm. in their household will never be able to get together and, and overthrow the system. You just, you can't. Mm-hmm. You're not because you need that a, most households are not one income households and when even when they kind of seem like it on the outside wh- why how do you think all these women were selling Avon and Mary Kay and and mm-hmm. you know my grandma my grandmother would pick up a job clean other people houses or watch kids and you got whole women out here that are running in-house daycares and then in the other side of their face they'll say I'm a stay-at-home mom girl you have a whole business in your house mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so those two forces are needed, but I feel like we'll never get to that place because it's so the focus is on how do I dominate? You know what I'm saying? And those it's like microaggressions. I explained this to somebody else. We all know what microaggressions are when it comes to, you know, uh, race dynamics, mm-hmm. but we don't talk about is those microaggressions that we have between gender uh, 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 dynamics. But the gender, it, but the gender dynamics starts to fall apart in in when we're youth so think about when we were younger and it was always the girls were trained to do the majority of the chores and let the boy just be a boy they would let the boys go outside and play and um do whatever recreational activities they needed to do but it was the girls that stayed inside to did the laundry did the cooking did the cleaning um tell your brothers the dinner is ready and you know maybe the the boys maybe did some yard work with the dad but for the most part historically we've been conditioned to be the helpmate to to do it all and so if that young male is raised to say that's a woman's place that's a male's place even if he see the woman needs help but he's shunned or shamed and helping in a certain regard because that's not your place boy well if he's not being raised like women like us to where we're teaching them a little bit of everything so that they can be self-sufficient if they marry or not because mm-hmm. it needs to be self-sufficient you know then it's going to keep this is going to keep happening right right and you know that dynamic is, is something that i've had to, it's a mind thing that you as the as women we have to overcome to even really have those conversations or even really, you know, have any pushback. Like for years, I thought it was my job to curate everybody's meals. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's, that's from conditioning, even, even inside my house. So my dad did the majority of the cooking in my house, but that was so different back then. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just a whole 180 from what everybody else was doing. So even leaving that house and getting out into the world and seeing, well, this this is not how that works or this is not how that happens. I started to believe that in order to be a good wife or a good woman, that it was my job to make sure that everybody ate. Mm-hmm. When nine times out of 10, like because of how my job, I pretty much for the most part, always had a business that worked from home or did outside sales or something like that. Something really like Mm -hmm. hands-on. I could get up and have a cup of coffee and it'd be four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I still haven't eaten anything. Right. So one of the things that I started to incorporate lately is I can't do something for you that I have not done for myself. Right. If, If I haven't, you know, taking the time to rest or I haven't taken the time to, you know, nurse myself back to health or, or or nourish my body with food and water and stuff like that, like, or even schedule doctor's appointments and stuff like that. Like, I cannot give to you what I have not given to myself yet. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, that, that rule kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things because here I was trying to fill in the gaps in somebody else's life and was expected to do so but 
at the same time, I was like falling apart at the seams because I hadn't done any of this stuff for myself. So now it's so when I wake up in the morning, like I had to completely change everything because I would like hit the floor at I, I'm an early riser, 5 30 a.m., 5 a.m. I'm hitting the floor before I can even brush my teeth good. Like I'm down here trying to figure out, okay, what are they gonna eat? Let me pack lunches, let me do this, let me do that. Like I'm at service from the time that my feet hit the floor, my eyes open, I'm in service of somebody else. Right. And over time, that just completely, like, it's demoralizing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it it just, it just, the mindset there is just a thing. Even when I don't have, say, I've got ADD as well, so I don't have the perfect morning routine, but I do make it a point to spend time on myself first. Right. Right. There's some things that you like to do for yourself first or like Uh in your I'm struggling with that since you asked. Um, I really need to meditate and work out in the mornings. But um, due to my crazy life, I work odd hours. I work late at night. So I'll get up. I take the boys to school. I come back home. I go to bed. Um, And I'll sleep until probably 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I'll start my meetings with my clients around 10 o'clock in the morning. But I don't really have a routine. Um, I feel like life is a bit rushed right now. If you want to know the know the truth, yeah. I do want to slow down, and I'm trying to figure out what that looks like. So I am currently in the middle of like re um, vamping all of my systems for my business. Um, going back to you know, am I making time every day to do my professional development? You know, am I honoring the schedule that I have in place because boundaries? So Mm -hmm. right now, my struggle is working through and sitting with my boundaries and what's going to work best for me and why I keep needing to be a people pleaser. So I think once I settle in on my boundary routine, I think that I can start doing more things for myself. Um, but since I constantly disrespect my own boundaries, I don't have any, we, we all do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't, I don't, I haven't had any space right. to really help myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I struggle with too. Like I'll do really well for like a couple of weeks and then the next few weeks, like, I'm just like, mm, you know, <laughs> Wait, start back up. I ain't been on a walk, you know, my back start hurting again and stuff like that. So it's it's definitely like something that you have to focus on forever. Like, or it doesn't, it just doesn't get done. There are some days I'm great and some days I'm not. Like today, I need to go work out. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> today we want to be say so we ain't we ain't working out over here today. We're getting ready for the workout tonight. <laughs> that's a good thing that's a good thing so what's next like we were talking before we jumped on here like you were like Lorraine are you gonna do any more content days are you doing any things and I was just like girl I'm I'm t- it's a day by day type of year for me like do you yeah. have any goals or plans for the rest of the year um I know I'm going out to Jamaica in October and I want to take the boys skiing for the first time this year. So we'll see about that. We want to go out to Colorado. But right now, um, I have, a, of course, I have a revenue goal I need to meet for the year. So I am I am restructuring my offers, re-looking at my business model to see if it really makes sense. Um, changing up my, my narrative, my copy, working on that website. Uh, other than that, it's just fine-tuning what's working inside of my business, getting rid of the things that no longer serve me. I'm on Operation Drive 40 Pounds right now. Um, I'm trying to date. It's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it's going. Um, and my boys are at an interesting age. You know, I'm trying to slow down so I can give them more of my undivided attention and be more present. Like, yes, I'm here, but my focus is to be more intentional, to be more present with them and with myself. Cause I feel like time is flying. So mm-hmm. I mean, nothing too crazy. I just want to feel like I have a grip on things a lot more. Like sometimes I feel like it's chaotic and I don't know what to focus on or things are going by too fast. Mm -hmm. So um, trying to get in a place to where I'm stopping more to get more gratitude, like 
I did this. I did create this life. I am on the right path. I'm, I have the capacity to do A, B, and C. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I think everybody's at, I mean, we, we chat back and forth, you know, during the week and stuff. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is where I'm at. And I'm like, I feel like that's where we're all at. Like yeah. every <laughs> woman that I talk to is like in this space of like, I'm just trying to grab the reins. <laughs> like if yeah. I could hold on to the motherfuckers, like <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to grab the reins and I'm also in this deep desire to heal like yeah. deep desire to release things that keeps me on this hamster wheel of constant comparison uh comparing myself to others and like I'm always thinking like how old is she she's she's 37 killing I just turned 41 what am I doing wrong I mean I do that a lot yeah. um but it's I feel like I have everything I ever prayed for and it's actually better than what I prayed for, but I also didn't expect for it to unfold like this. So, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, that's a, that's a big one for me because I, I have literally gotten everything that I have ever asked for right? and it shows up and it's not. Well, I know for it, but I really didn't expect it to be like that, you (laughs) know? You're like, but I got everything in my hand that I've literally asked for, like down to it's uncanny over here how I can call things to myself and then they come and then they show up in a different light. And it's just like, what is that? What's that called? Where you just it's I think it's a side effect of manifestation that people don't really talk about, or maybe maybe our manifestation is like maybe we need to start being more specific or something. I need to be more specific. So I've manifested a lot of things in the past 20 years. I call it delusional manifestation. And I was I I try to record another video the day I'll do it tonight, but um this this creator talks about delusional and I've done it multiple times. That probably needs to be a whole nother uh, thing that we do, but I have these aspirations and I'm not sure how and why <laughs> it just, it happens. And so, um, but yeah, I, I manifest a lot of things and people are like how, and I'm like, I just set in, I set an intention something comes to me, I finesse whatever it is that I have access to. And then I just kind of get what I want. And so I got a friend, she's like, Wendy, she's like, if anybody can find some money or make some money or do something, she's like, it's you. She was like, yep. <laughs> she's like you're always jet setting or doing this, that, and the third. She was like, you will literally call me and tell me that you're broke down to the bone. And then three hours later, you're going to dinner at some type of fancy restaurant because you hit a lick. I'm like, yeah. And- <laughs> So, but, you know, I set an intention, like, this is what I need for the day or for the month or for the week. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, what activities am I going to do? And a lot of times I'm like, a lot of these things are outside of my scope. So I start telling people, hey, who do you know? I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this. And next thing I know, y'all show up and say, hey, Wendy, you told me you were interested in such and such and such. Meet Kyle, meet this person, or here's an opportunity for you to... I don't know. It just kind of happens for me like that. So you're right. Same. I, I seem like I just speak stuff. I remember the time where I was wanting to make $50,000 a month. Mm-hmm. And I, I, sat down, I, had, I had this book that I write in and I, I don't think it's around me right now, but it's just, it's a little book that I write in and I bought it from like Cracker Barrel or something. So it has like all these sparkles on it or something, you know, a little fancy book. And right. I call it manifestation book and in it I love doing this it's one of my favorite manifestations or favorite manifestation works is I'll make a goal and then I will break down where that's going to come from first and Mm -hmm. then next page what I do is with that fifty thousand dollars I write out a budget Mm -hmm. with what what am I gonna when I get to this point and I'm making fifty thousand dollars a month what I'm going to do with it? How much is my mortgage going to be? How much am I going to spend per month on travel? How much, you know, my kids, how much does it take for just pay the nanny or do I, I want- call that a money assignment? So I always say you can't call it money if your money doesn't have an assignment, because if you say an arbitrary number, it's hard to call that number in. So I actually do mine backwards. I write out all of my expenses, however much more money I need just to have a cushion, miscellaneous, Mm-hmm. savings and so I attributed my activity like I need this because it's going to cover 
all those things, mortgage, car note, trip to wherever. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I love, that's one of my favorite ones. And for me, it's like one of the most effective ones. It is. I like writing it down in that physical book like that, because when I come back and I'm there, like it might be a year, might be two years or whatever. When I come back and I'm there, I look at it. I'm like, oh, while I'm, while I'm feeling some type of way, because I haven't hit the next milestone, I look back and I'm like, why are you freaking out? You, you, you're, you're going to get there. Like you, You've set the intention. You're moving in the right directions. You're doing the things that it takes to get there. Like relax. <laughs> yeah. And then it, it, it like calms me down seeing that I had that mindset that I, where I wanted to be. And now I'm here trying to get to the next place. But I also think it's easier for us to do it because you said the key thing, the how we have specific products and services in an audience that we can sell to. And I think one of the reasons why it's challenging for a lot of women is they maybe have not yet established a suite of products or a suite of services that they have available for sale. So that's why that's a struggle for most people. When I start talking about money or manifestation or revenue goals, well, how am I going to get the money? Well, you, you do need a product and a service and you need to be willing to pitch and you need to be willing to do some marketing. Right. And then one of the things that I get asked the most, because I deal with a lot of women who are in, you know, situations due to my content, like I'm I'm like, well, hey, you need to have backup plans. You need to have some money being made at all times. And one of the main questions that I get is, well, how do you decide what it is that you should be doing? Like what products or what services or how do you start off? What how do I come up with that ideas? And because of the nature of womanhood because of how we've been trained nine times out of 10, when I sit down with those same women and we start going over what it is that they do every day, where their superpowers lie, Mm -hmm. there's always something there. You're just giving it away for free right now. Mm -hmm. You're just giving it away. That's how I started my business. Actually, I started off writing resumes. I was literally giving this service away for free. I was writing my mother's resumes. I was writing, you know, high level resumes, but all my friends and stuff were coming to me and like, Hey, can you look at my resume? Can you help me rewrite it? And I was doing it for free. So when I found my back up against the wall in a bad relationship with two young children, twin daughters, and I was in pharmacy school, couldn't work a full-time job. I literally fell back on something that I was already doing for free. And right. that might look like for you in your house. So I'm, I'm meal planning every day. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, somebody is looking for that service. They, they would love to outsource meal planning every day. Other people are, you know, knitting or as a pastime. Okay. You're knitting all this stuff for free. Why are you not teaching people how to knit? Now with TikTok, you don't even have to knit a bunch of stuff. You can just literally get on there and get monetized from the the, the platform. So I just want to make people aware. Like I never, I do have a list. It's called 50 Side Hustles for Moms Who Want to Work From Home. You can go download that list. The link is in the description. But I want you to think about the things that you are doing for free first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And but, then, I, I, and then. I, but a lot of times it's guilt around that. Um, yeah. They feel guilty like this comes easy. It's nothing for me to do this, Wendy. Why would I charge? Well, you you want to generate that revenue so that you have more options for your family. So like the dishwasher goes down, you have money to replace that. Your child comes home and he wants to go to like right now they want to get in Cub Scouts. It's money for that, uniforms, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But that's another problem. We've been conditioned or shamed. You know, you don't have to make everything about money. You know, you could have a hobby, but, you know, if it's something that you love, that's going to be the one thing that's going to pay you the most because it's not going to feel like work. And I think once we shift our attitude around that and be like oh this is something that is going to give me financial stability like it's the thing that's going to help me get wealthy to where we do have options and generational wealth I think that's that's the conversation that needs to be had like let's shift how we're looking at it right right I agree I definitely agree with you well it is come to our time I feel like we could probably sit on here and talk all day if we wanted to about a myriad of different things that's right how to go so if you're watching this and you enjoyed uh Miss Wendy Anderson definitely follow her on TikTok she's going to send me her links I'll put them in the description um is there anything that you have um that you'd like to offer the audience that would help them to move forward 
Um, I, I am at WittyNicoleAnderson.com. You know, if you do need help with your systems and your front, you know, your operations, then come speak to me. But I hope you took something from this conversation. But at the end of the day, you know, automate your business, ask for help, outsource. Give yourself some grace. That's the best thing I can say. We need to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> All right, Winnie, thank you so much for having me. Again, like this video, um, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back uh, later on this week, actually tomorrow uh, with another um, um, social media content creator. And her uh, tag is actually money before men. So that is going to be a crazy conversation. I can already tell. Hopefully you guys tune into that, but leave in the comments. If you have any questions for Wendy, I'll definitely make sure that she gets them. Um, if you want to have her back, leave that in the comments as well. And we'll dive into some more things, maybe some more technical things. Cause we're both like tech nerds here. So that would be really fun to, um, could go on my other uh, channel called AI income streams. So that's going to be crazy with AI. You can make a ton of money in 